Hello everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello Scott. Josh, my friend, not one hour can go by without some sort of monetization conversation <laughs> appearing. Um, and even our beloved darling CDPR, CD Projekt Red are uh, getting in on the conversation. So this comes from a recent earnings call where um, CDPR's own Adam Kaczynski uh, was detailing Cyberpunk 2077's multiplayer. Um, something that we have known as coming, it was sort of announced last year. They said the, they said back in January that it is another AAA game, um, that mm -hmm. it's in development alongside the main version of Cyberpunk 2077, the single player, um, but it will be coming out. And so so they've sort of fleshed that stuff out in one of the earnings calls, um, or in this earnings call rather, and uh, in the way that it's being described, I think this is just going to be a big old talking point because I do trust CDPR on a personal level. I do think, um, just for me, I think that their value propositions that they've offered, the way they've communi communicated stuff so far with fans um, and everything else has been on point. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm on their side or whatever you want to call yeah. it from the way that they're phrasing stuff. But yeah, so they, uh, they're detailing microtransactions. They said, the goal is to design monetization in a way that makes people happy to spend money. I'm not trying to be cynical or hide something. It's about creating a feeling of value. That whole thing about manufacturing a sense of value obviously lines up with 2K, EA, Activision. That's a little bit corporately phrased. Um, yeah. But also, how many other ways can you say it? Um, he says, you can expect microtransactions, of course, and uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is a great setting for selling things, um, but it won't be aggressive. It won't upset gamers, um, but it will make them happy. That's our goal, at least. And he said to expect clarification soon because the release date is November 19th, but they're going to be outlining what's happening post-game very soon. Um, what's your initial thoughts? Because the, the thing is, the weird thing with this is that if you go back uh, to even the end of last year, um, yeah. other members of CDPR and Kaczynski himself have talked about microtransactions before, and one of their own studio heads hates the idea of it. So it, it's a weird yeah. internal thing, but I'll get to that in a sec. What do you think of this? Well, that's it. There's a lot of thought here, Scott. On the one hand, <laughs> I feel like you're almost playing with fire if you say gamers will be happy with this. Like, I would never, mm. ever say that in a million years because you're just almost batting the hornet's nest in a way. You're almost like shooting yourself in the foot because if you say gamers won't, will be happy with this, then it's mm -hmm. like, uh, well, they're absolutely not going to because I feel like the stigma around microtransactions <laughs> has never really gone away. It's kind of dulled, especially sure. after like the loot box fiasco. But I don't know. I feel like there's always going to be some kind of hesitation or caution when it comes to these practices it's being such included a in games. Term. Exactly, it's so loaded, it has such baggage. And even when you have like a project, uh, a studio like CD Projekt Red, who is ultimately, you know, has made a name for themselves, this kind of like consumer friendly um, publisher and studio, mm -hmm. you know, someone who puts gamers first or whatever. And you can kind of see that in their games. I remember when The Witcher 3 came out. And you got that lovely box where it had like a thank you note from the studio. And obviously mm. that game had like free DLC and then further expansions and didn't have microtransactions in the kind of conventional sense. And when you're going into a multiplayer game in 2020 and beyond, you're expecting microtransactions to be there for as much mm. as, you know, I might not like them. They're kind of embedded in that subgenre now. They're embedded in that kind of game. You know, there's I can't think of a major multiplayer game that's come out across the past three or four years that hasn't implemented some kind of storefront or some kind of a microtransaction system, even games mm -hmm. that you might not think of as multiplayer games like The Last of Us 1 or Uncharted 4 had a kind of like similar storefront that kind of got um, batted away a little bit because Naughty Dog was a, or is a beloved studio in the same yeah. way that CD Projekt Red is. So for me, it's in the way they handle it, but it is weird that this comes after people in the company have said in interviews as like recent as last year, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. talking about how it's a bad practice, how they don't really want to do it, how it doesn't really come across well. That is kind of strange and odd, and maybe there was just too much money on the table for them to kind of stick to that <laughs> idea. Well, it is, it is just one of the ways to monetize something over time. Like until the industry finds a new way of doing that, then you're, they're just gonna keep falling back on storefronts and that idea of offering you up additional pieces of content. If you're gonna have any studio maintaining servers or maintaining any sense of long-term uh, interaction with the community, then there needs to be some way for those people to get paid. And one of the easiest ways is to have some sort of storefront. So um, I can understand why it's in there. Like I said, in terms of being like on their side, I just mean that I wanna give them the benefit of the doubt yeah, um, totally. because of everything that they've done so far. So I guess it's that. Um, but yeah, if you go back to October last year, um, there was an interview with um, CDPR's Krakow office head, uh, John Mameas, he was talking to GameSpot um, during PAX, um, and he said that he thinks microtransactions are a bad idea in general. Um, he said that, I think it's a bad idea to do microtransactions after you release a game. It seems like it's very profitable though. It's probably a hard decision for the guy that runs the business to decide if we do it or not. Um, but if everyone hates it, why would we do something like that and lose the goodwill of our customers? Um, all of that was, a, was surrounding the single player. Um, obviously he's mm -hmm. talking generally about the 
the idea of microtransactions, but you could potentially give him also the big benefit of the doubt because it was a single player interview. Um, so there yeah. is that, but it stands to, the way he phrases that is very much everyone hates them regardless of where they're implemented, so there is that. Um, and then in November, later last year, um, Adam Kaczynski, again, the guy that just did the uh, earnings report now, um, said that they were still exploring options for Cyberpunk's multiplayer um, and they weren't yeah. ready to commit to anything. Um, he said, this is our first multiplayer game and we checked different options and possibilities. Um, that was written up by PC Gamer who point out that it's not your first multiplayer game. You've done Gwent and that is a free-to-play mm -hmm. game with microtransactions. Um, so maybe the way to sort of make good is to have Cyberpunk 2077's multiplayer also be free-to-play. Um, yeah. But I guess they'll just have to figure that stuff out. But I mean, the release date's going to be a good few years off. But again, and, and then referring to it as a AAA project, um, you know, I doubt it'll be free-to-play. Like, what's your thoughts no, on, on okay. that stuff? I I can't see it. Like the the way they've mm. talked about it, which is strange because we don't know that it's like officially officially happening. Like there's no release right. window. There's no title. There's only kind of like these comments that have been made and comments to investors about the earnings, project stuff, being yeah. in production. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. But it does seem like they're going all in on it being you know a, a marquee title alongside Cyberpunk 2077 single player and something that can hold its own and will last for a good few years. So I can't imagine it going free to play. I mean, it, it might do it. It might help them mm. justify these microtransactions because even though um, the comment that you just read out there from last year where they're saying you know it's a bad idea nobody likes them uh, <laughs> even then they're talking specifically about microtransactions added like post launch so I feel like with this now they're kind of like getting out ahead and saying well we we, we, we yeah. thought about you know rushing them in after the fact but if we're being upfront and open about it if we're talking about it years before the game actually comes out and getting you kind of primed and assuring you that it won't be you know aggressive it won't be trying to nickel and dime you they will be kind of useful and good inherently, mm -hmm. I suppose. Uh, maybe that's just trying to them trying to like smooth the message out and be like, look, I know we've said these things in the past, but we found a way to do them <laughs> properly. But whether um, they have, whether they're going to do them properly, I mean, it's. It's anyone's guess. Like, I'm in the same camp as you currently. I'm giving them a lot of benefit of the doubt because they have mm. done well in the past. And I feel like it's a good distinction that this is the multiplayer game only. Like, this isn't coming to the single player portion of Cyberpunk. That's going to get free DLC like The Witcher 3 and also paid expansions like The Witcher 3. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, at least they're not adding it to that. But it's it's totally up in the air, man. Like, this game going to be a few years out. It's just, it's, it's, it's strange. Strange. Yeah, the thing that um, stands in their stead in a, in a good way is that they are a developer-publisher combo. They can dictate everything. They don't answer to anyone. Um, Bethesda obviously have that too, but I'm pretty sure they still have to answer to Zenimax. Um, like mm -hmm. even regardless of what they want to do, like the, the, the Bethesda have gone down a whole route the last the last few years. But I feel like CDPR have managed to maintain their dignity and you know <laughs> respect from the consumer level. Um, and I think the the way that Kaczynski's been handling it, where last year he was like, look, we're still exploring stuff. Um, you have one of their studios your head saying that he doesn't like the idea of it um i just yeah on the top off the top of my head i can't think of any other way that you like you know could monetize something long term without just having a some sort of storefront that is embedded because at least that idea is accepted by the like by gamers or whatever and um, the yeah. idea of just a storefront where you can buy stuff like that is something that seems fine as long as it's handled well and um, the crux of it's going to be the thing that he says in the new report where it's how do you create a sense of value what could you leave out of the game that you'd have to buy with money that is valuable mm -hmm. and worthwhile that it then doesn't make us go, well, why wasn't that in the main game? I don't know how the totally. hell they split that, Adam. Yeah. But um, well, yeah, what would your just, assumption be there? I don't know. I Like, do they go down, like, the Battle Pass um, route? Because mm. that's obviously really popular now. Like, every single game has a, a Battle Pass in some form. I can't form, get enough of it. Like... Give me the Avengers one. Give me one per <laughs> character, please. <laughs> but Thank I feel you. like some players, including myself in a way, have kind of um, <laughs> warmed to that idea because on the, on the other hand, you know, you have this Battle Pass with a bunch of stuff, like, locked behind it that gets um you know updated every single season but on the other hand you get like free dlc and the community isn't split because it is mostly only mm. kind of cosmetics and stuff and for me that is better because i used to hate mm -hmm. paying for map packs i used to hate having to pay to keep up with the game and that might sound a bit entitled but i used to be completely you know have, have no fair. money and couldn't be able to drop 15 pounds on a um, call of duty map pack you know what i mean so mm -hmm. for me this is like the lesser of two evils and it? it allows them to continue to support games and continue to, you know, um, add things in, support the community and stuff. Like, it's it's not the end of the world. It's only when you get to, like, you know, Activision adding them in after the fact and kind of not being open about what they're doing and kind of being mm. a bit malicious with it. That's when it gets really seedy and really insidious for me. So if CD Projekt Red can get out, can get out in front and, like, completely Don't want to be, uh, be seedy. 
project. You don't want to be CD project be, idea, yeah. don't you, Scott? CDPR. That's the title. That's going to be the title yeah. of this, uh, that this video the, now. <laughs> <laughs> that's the um, yeah. That's the uh, the thing that they definitely need to avoid. I do I do have faith in uh, Kaczynski, the entire creative team. I hope that they can think of some way to monetize a fan base long term that just feels I was going to say friendly, but it just feels respectful. Um, because mm -hmm. you know platforms like Warframe have proven you can do it whilst building a really diehard community alongside, and CDPR have that. Uh, goodwill overall so yeah it feels like we're like on the side of something that can be so easily abused in regards to predatory micro uh, monetization practices but everything they've done this generation the last you know yeah. for a long time hopefully points to the idea that they won't mess it up so we'll see otherwise we'll come down with the ban hammer going forward um but yeah let us know you think down in the comments below of the idea of cyberpunk 2077's multiplayer getting microtransactions do you think they can pull it off or is it just something that makes you go ugh, another game with them <laughs> uh, for now i've been scott from whatculture.com I've been Josh from whatculture.com. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.